Guys, welcome back to the Off Grid Garage here in... It is a late night show, as you can see. Thank you so much for tuning in again here on this cold and freezing night. Finally, the rain is over and we have pure sunshine during the day. So I'm making a bit over four kilowatt hours. It's not too bad for winter time. Yeah, and finally, we have winter here in Australia and the temperatures during the night drop under 10 degrees Celsius. I know, right? I have to hurry up here with the video so I can go back inside to the fireplace where it's nice and warm. Guys, and thank you so much for all your comments under my last couple of videos. Very great comments, very kind words. Yeah, and reading all these nice comments, I think it is totally okay if you sometimes get a bit emotional. Yeah, guys, so this out of the way. Um, in this video, I want to talk about something we have spoken about a lot on this channel here. It is about... Yeah, guys, I know, I know. So don't, don't switch off, don't. So don't go to your favorite Walt Disney channel and watch Bambi. No, no, stay here on the channel. I hope it will be interesting. It is, it is a bit of a topic I'm not an expert in, so I'm, I'm reading about it and I'm trying to summarize this very quickly for you here. So we can all move on because this is just the preparation video for the next upcoming videos. You have requested so many times. Uh, I'll talk about this at the end of the video. So I think uh, let's get started. Ah, also. Got something here. So we, we all know battery degradation is mainly caused by two major things, which is a temperature and C rating. So if your batteries get really hot, like over 45 degrees, or you have a high C rating of over 0.5 C. So, so ideally the batteries should stay under 30 degrees Celsius and you have a charge or discharge current from under 0.2 C. Because this, this helps already a lot and prolongs the battery life. And it is a widespread knowledge, knowledge, right? If you charge your battery between 20 and 80% state of charge, it, it then has a lower degradation. And many people trying to use their batteries only between 20 and 80%. And to, to understand what this actually means, we need to have a look what is actually happening during charging and discharging of lithium ion phosphate batteries or lithium batteries in general. Uh, this this is not for my boat. It's a, it's another little project I'm working on. As with every battery, we have an anode and a cathode, right, in the battery. That's with all the batteries. And during charging, the lithium ions, these little particles inside, moving from one electrode to the other, and while discharging the opposite way, right. And these are little lithium ions, hence the name lithium battery. Uh, makes sense. But what happens during charging, all these lithium ions, they move into the cathode of your battery. And the cathode is made of carbon material. All these little ions, they squeeze into the carbon material of your cathode. And during this process, the, the, the cathode, the cathode actually expands. And, and this is not good because, because this results in cracks, little micro cracks. You can see the difference here in this little picture. And if these micro cracks appear, the cathode won't be able to receive any lithium ions in these areas where the cracks are. Makes sense, right? And this is then what we see as degradation. And this effect with the micro cracks exponentially increases when you fully charge your battery. So when all the lithium ions move into your cathode of your battery. And here's something I'm not 100% sure if this is correct, but I think it is totally dependent on the voltage you charge your battery with. If you charge your battery with a higher voltage, you know, it is like 
putting pressure on these lithium ions and you push them into the cathode and it is more likely that these cracks happen. So the higher the charge voltage is, the more you force these lithium ions into the cathode and cracks could more easily occur than if you charge with a lower voltage. So to prevent or minimize these micro cracks, it is actually wise to not go too high with the charging voltage. And interestingly, this 80% thingy actually comes from the electric vehicle industry because they advised the drivers to not to charge over 80% to keep the batteries in these vehicles from prematurely degrade or fail. And because the driver has usually no access to the battery voltage of the car's battery, right? They just advised, well, charge it to 80% only to prolong the battery life. And this is something the driver and this is something the driver could easily do by just looking at the battery gauge. Because this usually shows you the percentage of your state of charge inside your vehicle. But this whole advice to charge to 80% is actually for lithium ion battery cells. Because there the voltage of your battery is almost linear to the state of charge. And charging to 80% only reduces then the voltage of your battery cell as well. Here you can see this is the charge curve on the right hand side of a lithium ion battery. And look how linear this is. And at 80% state of charge, um, which is. Yeah, here, here, 1954. This is exactly where we would have 80% state of charge of a lithium ion battery. And if I just go a little bit higher, look at the voltage 4.1, 4.11. 4.12 the voltage increases linear to the state of charge so it's it is very very easy with lithium ion to find the 80 percent happiness but um now with lithium iron phosphate it is a bit different right and with with the very flat charge curve we have seen in many of my tests here on the channel we know we can fully charge lithium iron phosphate batteries to almost 100 percent with a reduced and fairly low voltage. So the, so the actual pressure you apply on this battery to move these lithium ions into the cathode is very reduced and therefore the risk of micro cracks is lower as well. And that's why we see a lower degradation in lithium iron phosphate batteries. And from my comprehensive testing here on the channel, we know we can almost fully charge a battery at 3.4 volts already, if we allow a bit of absorption time afterwards. This will be 95% plus state of charge at 3.4 volts. And a charging with a higher voltage almost makes no sense. It, it only speeds up things a little bit, but it also increases the degradation. This is, this is the replacement cell Kishu sent me for the damaged one from the last delivery. It took uh, probably five weeks now until this one arrived, but, but here is the replacement battery cell. Nice one Kishu, thank you very much. Great service as always. Yeah, as I just said, at 3.4 volts, you can have easily 95% state of charge or even higher. So it basically makes no sense to charge uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries here to only 80%. In fact, it is actually almost impossible to do that. There is no defined voltage on the charge curve for the 80% state of charge threshold. Here, have a look at this. Okay, so very, very quickly here. This is a charge curve of a 280 ampere hour lithium ion phosphate battery. This is the EVE um, 280K version of the battery. You can see how flat this battery curve is, right? From the start all the way, almost the same voltage. And uh, let me quickly find the 80% mark here. 280 ampere hours times 0.8 is 224 ampere hours. 224 ampere hours 
224. Here we go. This would be exactly 80% state of charge of this lithium iron phosphate battery. And we see we are at 3.384 volts. If I move a little bit further here, we are still at 3.38 volts, right? So the voltage hasn't moved, but we are now at 230 times. We are now at 90% state of charge already, and the voltage hasn't moved. And if we go the other way, still 3.38 volt. This is only 75% state of charge. There is no defined voltage for 80%. There is nothing we can program our solar charge controllers with to say to stop at 80%. So the only real method to find 80% in lithium ion phosphate batteries would be to use the column count method and count the ampere hours going out of your battery and no, going out of your battery and into your battery. So you fully charge the battery and set your smart chunt to 100% state of charge and then you count the ampere hours all the way to say 30-40% and then recharge the battery until the smart chunt says okay we are at 80% state of charge now I have counted all the ampere hours and then you stop charging. This will work fine but the smart chunt needs frequent recalibrating as well because it will drift. Counting ampere hours is not 100% precise and the smart shunt does not count all the ampere hours. Very, very small currents, for example, it does not count. And hence, over time, it will drift and shows you the wrong value for your state of charge. And then you stop at 80% state of charge, and in reality, you're only at 70%. But uh, we, let's talk about the smart shunt method a little bit later when we are actually having a look at all the settings of the smart shunt and what we can do with this device. Okay, then what about discharging to 20%? This should work, right? Well, we have here the lithium iron phosphate discharge curve 224 ampere hours, 200 24 ampere hours. Yeah, this would be 224 ampere hours again, right? 80% and 20%. So here you can see we are at 3.21 volts. This is exactly 20%. And you can also see we are still in the flat area of this curve. The cliff or the knee starts up here, somewhere here at 3.1 volts or even down to 3 volts. But then we are already at 95% discharge of the battery. So as you can see from these two examples, charging and discharging lithium ion phosphate batteries, it is not possible to define a voltage for these two points and put this into your solar charge controllers to stop charging at 80% or in your inverter to turn off the load at 20%. There's no voltage you can set in these devices to do that. To use the voltage and stop charging or stop discharging, we have to wait until we reach these knees or cliffs. And this is around at 3.4 volts and 3.1 volts. If we set these two points in our devices to stop charging, stop discharging, we are using around 90 to 95% state of charge of the capacity of your battery. And before you want to use only from 20 to 80%, so only 60% of your capacity to keep these batteries happy and healthy. And now we are using 90 or even 95% of the capacity. This cannot be good. But remember, we are not going into the extreme voltages of 3.6 volts or 2.5 volts, which then would cause a higher degradation again. So we are staying basically in the flat area of these curves. And before we go into the steep areas or going down the cliff on the other side, we stop charging or discharging. So the voltage we are using in these batteries is fairly constant. So, as, so I think with this knowledge now, we can deep dive into the settings and options of solar charge controllers, inverters, uh, BMSs, um, smart chunts, and all these other devices, where we can literally set hundreds of parameters to keep our batteries healthy without the need to use this 20 to 80% window. So there will be a whole series 
of videos coming here on the channel very soon where we explore all these different devices and the possibilities of setting up the optimal for you optimal because every system is a bit different so they find the optimal settings for your installation and your setup and we will explain every single parameter in these devices so we understand what we are doing, what we have to set and what makes sense. And I probably don't know all of these parameters. So it is good to have you here on board and you can help out with your knowledge and we can all learn from each other. So I think so far this video for today, it is more like a little bit of a summarizing video now, but uh, I wanted to explain this um, yeah, 20 to 80% myth again a little bit, you know, it's like, I'm using my battery only between 20 and 80% to keep it healthy. Well, yeah, if you have lithium ion batteries, that is true. But for lithium iron phosphate batteries, you don't need it. You can't do it reliably. And quite frankly, it is not necessary to do that. We can almost use the full capacity of these battery cells without increasing the degradation. And I'm, I'm sure I have scratched here only the surface of this degradation thingy while charging and discharging. So if you know anything more or if I said something wrong in this video here, please leave your comments down below so everyone can read this and we can all learn from each other again. Uh, this is what the community is for, right? I'm not, I'm certainly not an expert and or a, a chemist or something. I'm just reading online as well. And I'm trying to make sense of all of that. So if you want to explain something differently or better, please leave this all down in the video description. I would really like to read your comments. And I'm sure we've got some experts here on the channel, which have a far better knowledge of that. So already a big thank you for that. Yeah, guys, I would say so far this video from today, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here. Thank you for all your support here on the channel, for all your very generous donations. And as always, guys, you stay charged, stay safe. And thanks again for watching. I love you all, guys. See you then. Bye bye.